Fortunately for both of us, me and my partner, we're seniors. We live on a fixed income, but we have had to bootstrap this entire company. We have not been able to get funding. How exactly did the uh, death of uh, Princess Diana affect your life? Tell me about that. On February the 13th, 1957, Bertha Berman, an African-American woman, filed for a patent for the fitted sheet. So in 57, she had the original fitted sheet. It's been changed since. And to boast her credit, in 1937, she invented the toothbrush holder. So there is this amazing woman that had five patents that the world doesn't know about. Russell. I am a senior. I am an entrepreneur. And I'm also an inventor. I live in Spanish Springs, Nevada. I lived in California for 38 years before moving here. I decided to move here the night that Princess Diana died because I was in an unhappy marriage and wanted to escape. Because we are talking about uh, escaping from marriage, uh, tell me about, about that. It be. So you escaped, then what happened? Uh, my son was living in Nevada, and so I called and asked him if I could move with him because I was unhappy. And so he says, can you be here tomorrow? And I said, no, but give me three weeks and I'll be there. So I moved here in 1998, and I've completely turned back. I started back in school. I finished and got my bachelor's degree in 2006 and I um, met my partner in 2008 he injured his back and that, that's how we ended up starting the company is my inventing a sheet uh, now tell me a bit about um, your infancy growing up uh, um, in the, the United States what do you remember of those early early time in your life? Because like I said before, uh, we are essentially about storytelling here. We are talking about our story. We need to learn more about where we are coming from so that other people uh, like us can also learn as we talk about ourselves. We also help them to talk about themselves. So uh, help me remember uh, in your infancy, what do you remember about your time, where you were born, your city, your neighborhood? Please go ahead and share with us. I was born in Magnolia, Mississippi um, in 1950 on a farm that my parents owned. My parents were both entrepreneurs, so maybe that's where I got the bug from. They owned a bean factory and a grocery store. When I was 11 years old, we moved to California to be with my older sister. And then I lived in California for 38 years. I uh, was married there and I had two children. But I moved to Nevada in 98 and completely turned my life around. I'm, it's been awesome ever since. So, uh, in your early years, uh, what were your kind of, um, what, what kind of picture do you have of California uh, as you were growing up as a young adolescent? Oh, I loved California, um, but it was just not a place that I wanted to be after my marriage was going wrong and both of my children had moved away. So, I was an, in, an empty nester. I was going to school at the time. Um, and working and I just wanted more for my life I wanted to be happy so the night that Princess Diana died was the night that 
really changed my life. I was able to identify with her and the things that she had. I had a nice home and life was profitable, but it wasn't good. And I came up with the idea that I needed to change my life because no one had ever died and came back and said, Ruby, life here on on earth, if it's not good, you're going to die and go to heaven. So nobody has ever come back and told me they were going to, that life is good once I die. So I decided my life here on earth would either be heaven or hell. And so I decided heaven and I have a good life. I love my life. Thank you so much for that. It's good to love your life. Uh, this, this is a journey and it's an important one. We only live once, so it's good that we better live well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. So tell me in a, a more particular way, uh, how exactly did the uh, death of uh, Princess Diana affected your life? Tell me about that. It was because she had material things but you could tell by what was going on in her life it was hectic and she wasn't happy so I had the material things but I was not happy and my husband was having an affair at the time while I was going to school and I had just had enough because I had married him twice but I had two wonderful children and I wanted to be there for them so I stayed until my daughter was 18 She left home, and three weeks later, I left. I moved with my son, who told me at the time that he might only be here for another two months because his job required him to move a lot. And I told him that was okay. I just needed to get on my feet. So I, um, after moving to Reno, I got a job three weeks later, and here we are, 25 years later. (laughs) Here we are. I like that. I like that. All right. So how did you become an inventor? Uh, At what uh, stage in your life did you become an inventor? And what sort of um, uh, lead you towards that trajectory? Back in 2013, um, my partner and I um, had been together for several years and we're both very active. Even though we were both seniors, we were always doing things. We traveled the world, but in between traveling, we would come home and we would work on home projects. Well, we had built my uh, deck from my home and we had time, nothing to do. And I was excited about the deck. So I said, let's go build your daughter one. And he said, okay, so we did. But when we went there, he started walking up a ladder and when he went to get stepped down off the ladder, he missed the last step, fell flat on his back. And so after that injury, he would toss and turn at night, messing up the bed each night. I hate making the bed. And what he didn't know was the only time I'd make the bed was when he'd come up on the weekends. So one evening when he was on his way home, I thought of the problem, which was, I hate making the bed, but he would mess it up all the time. So I invented a top sheet. I took some extra fabric from a sheet. I put it on the bottom of my sheet. We tested it for three years and he was never able to toss and turn and untuck it. So we came up with the name Stay Put. So we have a trademark for the name Stay Put for our top sheet. Months after that, I had cataract surgery that left me blind in my left eye. And with that, I started, after inventing the sheet, I started researching the challenges that the blind had in making a bed. And I invented befitted bedding. Befitted is an easy to make three-step duvet cover and both stay put sheet and my duvet cover has a tail on it 
So once you tuck both of them, they're guaranteed to stay put. After that, I went on to give more thought to the challenges that the blind have in making a bed. And I have literally redesigned every item on the bed to make it easy even for a child to make. And my bedding has been accredited by the American Council of the Blind as accessible. So I'm honored with that. Now, what is the situation of of the of the befitted now? That, that is how you call it? Is that correct? Befitted bedding. Let befitted me tell bedding. you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you the reason we came up with the name befitted. In nine on February the 13th, 1957, Bertha Berman, an African-American woman, filed for a patent for the fitted sheet. So in 57, she had the original fitted sheet. It's been changed since. And to boast her credit, in 1937, she invented the toothbrush holder. So there is this amazing woman that had five patents that the world doesn't know about. And because I invented the fitted the top sheet, I wanted to know who invented the fitted sheet. So I started to research and that's when I found out. There was a Bertha Berman who invented the fitted sheet in 1957. But the world doesn't know about her. There's only about two paragraphs on her entire life, which is sad, especially someone that has literally touched so many bodies in the world, more than any other item ever. And there's no recognition for her. What do you think is supposed to be done about that? And also maybe uh, many other people like her uh, whose memory sometimes uh, get missing because uh, like you said, uh, what she have done has impacted people. Therefore, uh, it should have been easy to find traces of her and what she have left behind in terms of the memory. So what do you think could have been done or should be done uh, to make sure that a uh, situation like that don't keep happening? Oh, it's my mission to make sure that the world knows who she is. You know, when you invent something, when you come up with a, an idea that you can revolutionize an industry and it just goes to the wayside. It's really sad. You know, um, it hasn't been easy to get to this point. Um, fortunately for both of us, me and my partner, we're seniors. We live on a fixed income, but we have had to bootstrap this entire company. We have not been able to get funding. But now I'm to the point where I think we're going to be okay because we've got uh, products for pre-order. And Befitted is just the beginning. When I say we're going to revolutionize the industry, I'm talking about the entire industry. The way our sheet is shaped and the duvet cover is shaped on the, because they both have tails on the corners, we lose fabric. And to salvage that fabric, we came, I came up with the idea of making a doll bed because our bedding is so simple. A toddler will be able to make the bed once shown how. So I came up with the idea of a doll bed to actually teach the child how to make the bed. And it comes with a book that illustrates how to make it. And before they go to bed at night, how to tuck the monster underneath. So not getting funding has given me so much time to think and really organize the company to the fact of where we're going to have designs, our patented designs, all the way from split king down to a doll bed. We also have befitted dorm, which, you know, I 
the dorm room beds are a little bit different. And our designs have made it so that it would be so simple to put into a dorm room because it's so simple to make. And our bedding stays put, so you don't have to make the bed every day. Now, how do you find client uh, for your service, for the product that you design? How do you go about the marketing to be able to get the right clients that will buy so at least you can remain in business? Now that we're past COVID, which was a nightmare, we actually launched our first website on March 2020, March 10th, 2020, which was the day that the world actually shut down. It was also my mother's birthday. So I told my partner, you know, maybe God is telling us to take a pause. And we did. Um, several months ago, we started revamping our new website to bring it up to date. Because during COVID, we just had to sit back. We had no money, no funding, and really no way to get the word out there. So because we haven't been able to get funding, I've been networking to let people know that we exist. Actually, this year in March, you know, on March 10th was a bad day for us. March 13th was not a good day either. I went to London to um, Win Trade Summit, and that was the day that Silicon Valley Bank belly up, and I have went to London to meet people to get investments and so that went out the window so we came back and started to regroup again now we're back at it um we have our products on befittedbedding.com for pre-sale we have 42 products to pre-launch we have eight different designs we have more designs coming in. We have a young lady from Cameroon that is the founder of an organization called Mothers to Daughters. Now that she's got Mothers to Daughters up and running, which is a nonprofit, she is bringing in a line of bedding called Cameroon. And so that's gonna give us some African influence. We also have another designer. His name is Jerome Lawrence. He is an artist that has sold several paintings to the Jim Carter Library for over $50,000. So that's our beginning. And we will introduce products as we go because we have everything that you can put on the bed. Okay, now in terms of the client that you would like to attract uh, into your business line, are you also looking at maybe uh, the hospitality industry, uh, hotel, of course, I mean, uh, tourism uh, sector? Uh, where is, which kind of client are you, are you really looking into? to come into your line of business? Well, because there has been no significant change in bedding in the last 67 years. We want to dominate the bedding industry because it's time for change. It People never gave a thought about how simple it could be to make a bed. And if you toss and turn all night, that bed will stay in place. So yes, um, when I say we want to dominate the industry, it's because it's a game changer. We're bringing innovative ideas into an industry that nobody really gave a thought to. So our first focus would be on seniors and people that are visually impaired or blind because all of our designs were designed because I lost my eyesight in my left eye. So I started thinking, what if I was blind? So all of my designs are designed around that. You know, there are 200 
and 59 million people in the world that are visually impaired, and there are 49 million that are blind. So when I re was researching and I saw a young lady that was 15 years old, blind, and it was her first time learning how to make the bed, I was thinking, why is it so complicated? Do you know the traditional bed making is a hospital corner? That's a seven step process and you have to center it. So you have to go back and forth to make sure it's center it. It's centered. Well, my top sheet centers itself. No going back and forth. And all you do is you tuck in the very bottom and you're done. And it's going to stay there until you're ready to do laundry. And I put the same thought into the duvet cover. My duvet cover unzips. You lay the duvet in it. You zip it back up. It's also reversible. And it has that same tail that staplet has, the staplet sheet has. So it's going to stay put until you're ready to do laundry. So after that, I started thinking about the other items on the bed. I changed the bedspread to where it fits around the mattress like a glove. And the fitted sheet, you know, there's nothing that you can do about it except for maybe change the label on it. And I did. I took the label and I put it, made it a little bit larger than the standard. And I put it in the center of the fitted sheet so that you don't get the short and long ends wrong when you're making the bed. So that saves time. All right, looking at your invention, uh, what would you say you are most uh, happy about uh, looking at what you're doing and the impact you're making in the world? You know, I am I wish they didn't have it, but I'm loving the challenge of putting this together and bootstrapping it. So I'm hoping that I can bootstrap this to billions so I can eventually write my book of the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur. California is, you know, I was really sad because I was thinking I was the only woman or, uh, and it was because I was a woman of color that it was so hard for me to get funding. And I belong to an organization called Entrepreneista. And several weeks ago, they put out an article it's about a proposition in California, a Senate bill. I think it's 54. And it talks about the fact that in 2021, there was $263 billion invested. And only 1.9% of that went to women. So imagine if you're a woman of color, what that percentage is for you. And with that, you know, I said, I love a challenge. So I've started trying to figure out how can I get the word out there. So I network a lot. This year I was in, at the London Stock Exchange. I was at Parliament and I was also at the House of Lords. That's when I went to see if I could get some funding. And that's the day that we found out that Silicon Valley had dumped. So investors are tightening up even more. Okay, so what would be the final thought, uh, considering uh, the conversation that you have had today? Uh, maybe this is your final thought here to also the people that are listening to you. It can, it can also be a way to sort of um, advertise your product to them and tell them why they need to get your product. Oh, because it's original. There was a lot of thought went into everything we're selling. Our designer, her name is Christina. Dos Santos, she designed the home that Alicia Keys purchased um, three years ago for about $22, 23000000 million. Educate people on how important sleep is. Somebody that says, I only got five or six hours sleep a night, they don't realize that they are cutting their life short. Sleep is one of the most important things that you can do. And if you live to be 75 years old, you would have spent 25 years of that in bed. So people really should give some thought to their bed. I have a girlfriend that'll go out and spend $300 for a purse, but she'll spend $29 for a set of sheets and wonder why she doesn't sleep good. Quality bedding is an investment. 
that everyone should make. Thank you so much for that. That is a great message because the bed is where we finally are actually rest at the end of the day. So it is important that we give a, a thought to it. It cannot just be casual. Uh, we need to be really intentional about that. And of course, uh, also about many other things that we do. Thank you so much, Ruby. I appreciate the conversation and the sharing here. It has been a pleasure listening to you. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. Remember, remember February 2024. Please go on our website, befitted.com and order so that we can get this company up and running. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that.